culture. In terms of the story, of course, Osiris and Nighthawk have fled the X and I with their lives and they're barreling down the road. They get rid of their phones because or they put them in some sort of Faraday cage because they know they're being tracked. They're scared for their lives and all they know is they want to figure out what's in this magical box that June has left behind. So somewhere along the side of the road in the middle of the night, they pull over and they find a very strange data port, which is antiquated. Nighthawk, being astute, figures out that there's probably only a few places currently on Earth because it's old technology that could actually host this data port. And so they settle on an amusement park called Dream Dream, which they both uh, grew up going to, now shuttered. And they know that some of the robots in uh, Dream Dream are capable of hosting this technology because all that really is in there, besides some clippings and some old CDs, uh, let's call it the general ephemera of Shiny's life, is this data port, which is obviously at the center of what they're being pursued for. And they figure whatever's on this data port or a hard drive, to use the parlance of the kids, is certainly something dangerous because it almost just cost them their lives. So they figure if they can figure out what's on the hard drive, that might be the difference between them living and dying. So they make their way to Dream Dream as they wander around a, an abandoned amusement park. So if you want to imagine sort of a Disneyland, Universal Studios type park, but it's been closed down for 20 years, the weeds are growing, the rides are creaking, it's night, there's no lights. And uh, they're trying to figure out where the robots are that were part of the show pavilion, dancing robots. And they're discovered by the night watchman who rather than throw them out or call the police, uh, takes kindly to them and leads them over to the pavilion he puts on all the lights, flicks it on, and uh, you get the sense, uh, at least you do in the audio portion on the box set, which you'll hopefully hear someday, you certainly get the sense that the Night Watchman has done this before, and maybe this is his way of stemming loneliness in the middle of the dark night, watching an amusement park by himself, albeit shuttered. Ruby, the lead robot, who's kind of a 1930s Corrine chorus girl, voiced in 1970s Patois, or Patina, does her signature song, Hooray. I certainly remember going to amusement parks as a kid. I went to Disneyland circa 1974, and I can't quite place the memory exactly, but I certainly remember being fascinated by what Disney called animatronics, basically human-like figures. He mostly used hydraulics in the old 60s technology. Um, and there's a famous story when he previewed Abe Lincoln at the New York World's Fair in 1964 that Abe's oil started leaking out of his head. Um, and it caused quite a stir. So you might want to look that one up. But is the idea that, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you watch a human form act human, you do have a human-like response. It does engender empathy or anger. And I remember having those experiences as a kid. So I guess I'm relying on that. So imagine these kids, they've come to this amusement park in hopes of figuring out what the information that they possess is. They know they need a, a robot like Ruby to access the information because she has the data ports that will host this particular kind of you know thumb drive type thing. But the first thing the Night Watchman wants to do is show off and let the kids see an old-fashioned you know, robotic show. So imagine Ruby's in great shape. It's left to the imagination why she's in great shape. But all the other robots are kind of creaky, falling apart. The clothes are falling off. So it's a bit of kind of spooky. You have this kind of stage musical type of moment where they walk in, the guy flips on the lights, and boom, now uh, there's a dancing robot. I think that would be really fun to stage, and it certainly would bring the energy up in whatever room we would be performing in. So that's how I look at it. 